Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at the vector equation of a plane. And in mathematics, a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely in all directions. And to find the vector equation of a plane means to describe the location of any point on that plane using an x, y, and a z coordinate. So say we have this point here, which I'll label R. To find the location of this with respect to a fixed point, which we'll call the origin, we want to describe this vector in three dimensions. To do this, we need to know a point that lies on the plane, let's say in this point here. And this is given by a position vector, which we'll call A. And we also need to know two direction vectors that run parallel to the plane but not parallel to each other. So we'll have a direction vector which we'll call S and another direction vector which we'll call T. Now these do not need to be perpendicular to each other, they just cannot be parallel to each other. So to go from A to R, we can use the combination of these two direction vectors. We can use two lots of S and two lots of T. So this general point R then, we would say R is equal to the position vector A plus two lots of the direction vector S plus two lots of the direction vector T. And I should say as well that we call the plane pi. So this is the symbol we use for plane. And we can use our two direction vectors to travel to any point on this plane. Say for instance, we wanted to get to here. Now we'll call this point R, and to go from O to R, we would go back to the fixed point on the plane. Now we'll go across by 3T, and then we'll travel in the opposite direction to S, so this would be negative S. So in this case, R would be the position vector A minus S plus 3T. So by using this position vector and the two direction vectors, we can travel to any point on this plane. So the general equation then will be R. We'll say that R will equal A, the position vector, plus a multiple of the direction vector S, we call this lambda, plus a different multiple of the direction vector T. And this is called the parametric equation of a plane. We call it parametric because lambda and mu are our two parameters. Okay. In the next example, I'm going to show you how to find the equation of a plane from three points. Okay, so in this example, we've been asked to find the vector equation of a plane connecting these three points. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this on the diagram. So we've got the three points, which I'll call A, B, and C. And we'll label the plane as pi. So to find the equation of this plane, we need a fixed point, which I'll call the origin. And then we can describe A, B, and C as position vectors from this origin. So we have the equation here, and the first thing we need to know is this position vector. And for this, we could use any of these three points. But I'm going to use point A. So we'll say that R is equal to our position vector, and then we need plus our parameter lambda, and then we need a direction vector S. And we can find that direction vector by going from A to B. So we can get from A to B by going from A to O, and then from O to B. But we know A to O it's the same as negative O to A. So I can simplify this as O to B minus O to A. And then we can just substitute in these two position vectors. And this will give us the five take away the negative two, the one take away the zero, and again, so this will be our first direction vector. And I'll substitute that into our equation. And then we need our second parameter, mu, plus a different non-parallel direction vector for t. 
And for this, I'll use a vector A to C. So A to C will be A to O plus O to C, which we know we can write as O to C minus O to A. And then we can use these two position vectors. So our direction vector will be the six take away the negative two, the two take away zero, and the negative five take away zero. So then we'll substitute this direction vector back into our equation. And this would be the parametric equation of that plane. Okay. Let's try another question. So in this question, we've been asked to verify that the point P with this position vector lies in a plane with this equation. So we know this 5.5 is our X value. This is our Y value. And this is our Z value. So what we need to do is to find the general point of X, Y, and Z from this equation. Well, X will be the two plus the lambda minus the mu. Y will be the one plus zero lambda plus two mu. And Z will be the negative three plus two lambda plus mu. And we know for this point to be on a plane, the values of lambda and mu must be the same for each of these equations. So we'll substitute these values into here. And then we'll tie the knees up by moving the constants to the left hand side. So we can work out lambda and mu from equation one and equation two. Then we'll substitute them into equation three. And if they come out as one, then we know that P must be a point on that plane. So from equation two, we know that mu must be equal to negative two. If we substitute that into equation one, then lambda must be 1.5. And we'll substitute both of these into equation three. So we get one will equal two lots of lambda plus mu. And the three take away the two does give us a one. So we'll say lambda and mu are consistent for x, y, and z. And therefore, p lies in the plane. Okay. Let's try one more question. Okay, so finally, we've been asked to find the value of m given that the plane pi with this vector equation passes through the point 5, m, and 7. So perhaps you want to try this question yourself. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So we know that the 5 is the x, this is the y value, and this is the z value. And then we need to find the general form of x, y, and z from this equation. And now we'll substitute these values into our general equations. So like we did a minute ago, we'll find the value of mu and the value of lambda. Then we'll substitute them into here to work out m. So from equation 3, we know 9 will equal 6 mu. So mu will equal 3 over 2. We'll substitute this into here for equation one. We know this will be negative six. We'll move that to the left hand side. So eight will equal four lambda. So lambda will equal two. And then we'll substitute lambda and mu into equation two to work out m. So m will be the three plus the three. M will equal six. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.